Welcome to our continuing story about Pensacola, Florida, North America's first place city. Now, we call ourselves the city of five flags because basically we have been just exactly that. Uh, three of those flags being European. And in the course of time, beginning about the year 1700, conflict arose one, from one, one source or another. And the first of them was between the French and the Spanish. Both of these countries attempted to place colonies here on the Gulf of Mexico beginning just about 1700. And for 20 years or so, they got along reasonably well. But then in 1719, war broke out between the two on the European continent. The word of what had happened got to the French first. They were commanded at, uh, by General Bienville at uh, Mobile, and they made an attack against the Spanish fort here at Pensacola and defeated them. The Spanish were, were exiled, brought back very quickly in less than three months uh, with, a, with reinforcements, and this time they defeated the French. A month and a half later, the French came back once more. They're now having been uh, uh, reinforced by a large uh, French uh, uh, naval fleet, and in a matter of just about four hours, they defeated the Spanish once again. And at that point in time, a decision had to be made. The French had long thought that they would like to make Pensacola their Gulf capital. But now the, the generals and the admirals got together and they said, now wait a minute, we've had three battles here in a matter of about four and a half months. Who has won, the home team or the visiting team? And they had to admit that it was the visiting team and every of every occasion and so the decision was made look without a huge defense force we cannot maintain Pensacola ourselves so we'll just we'll we'll just depart and so the French destroyed the fort burned the city and took off and went back to Mobile but when they came together the, the two countries came together at the peace table months later uh, the French said they, they didn't want Florida and so it reverted to the Spanish and a few months later uh, another Spanish colony was begun on Santa Rosa Island and they became the, the masters of Florida once again. That maintained, that was this, the situation here until we got into the, the late uh, 1750s when we had the, uh, worldwide actually what became known as the Seven Years War, principally between the French and the British. And things were going badly for the French all across the, all across the, the world. And as a result, they appealed to their friends, their, 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 actually their relatives and the, the crown in Spain, asking for help. And the Spanish uh, said, we'll help. Well, of course, that meant that they were now at war with the British as well. And the British, taking it upon themselves, said, well, the thing for us to do is take advantage of this. And so a large fleet uh, sailed out of Britain, laid siege to the city of Havana, and in a matter of time, captured it. Now, that Havana, Havana was, the, was the crown jewel of the Latin American empire for the Spanish. And so they wanted it back badly, and they traded back and forth, back and forth. And finally, the agreement was they gave... Uh, to Britain, all of Florida, from the Keys to the Mississippi, in exchange for the city of Havana, and the British moved in, and we began a 20-year British period. But the Spanish never gave up hope of getting Florida back. And so, beginning in the, about the year 1770, just as the American Revolution was beginning, the Spanish began to make plans in that direction. They, they installed in New Orleans a very aggressive general named Bernardo de Galvez, and they began to make plans quietly, very quietly, Quietly, that they were going to, when the time was right, they were going to be able to attack and take back Pensacola and Florida. Of course, the, the British were aware of this. They had, the, uh, they had their intelligence services working. They recognized what was happening. And it was, but this time, the British governor here was Peter Chester. And Chester brought in all sorts of uh, uh, able uh, assistants, and they began build, building a new fort. And this was when the British erected Fort George up on top of what later became, was called Gages Hill and what we now call Lee Square. But that's where the fort was placed. And the Spanish, of course, bided their time. And then at an appropriate moment in the, in the course of the, uh, the American Revolution, they entered the war on the side of the French, not on the side of the Americans. They, were, they helped the Americans on the side, but basically they were technically allied with the French. The Spanish made plans, they began their attack, they uh, took care of the uh, British uh, settlements to the west of us, and then beginning in February of uh, the year uh, 1781, the attack, the siege began here at Pensacola. They, they placed a little fort right down along what we would today call Spring Street, this became known as Fort San Bernardo, and for three and a half months there was a siege back, back and forth. On the 9th of May, 1781, a lucky cannon shot hit a powder magazine inside Fort George, tremendous explosion, killed more than 50 men, and the battle was over. And as a result of that, the Spanish now did control Florida once more, and the British left for good. Well, this time we began the, the final Spanish period here. And there, 
It was such that they, they, this took place, of course, as I say, in the beginning in 1781. This was a time when there was turmoil back in Europe because the Napoleonic Wars were soon to come, and the, the Spanish homeland was involved in turmoil and conflict all through this time. And as a result, poor little Pensacola here got very little help, either with, with money, supplies, or manpower. But they struggled on, and we move into the early part of the, uh, of the 19th century, and basically what begins to happen, now they have begun to have Indian troubles. And the, but by now, the Indian problem basically is, is this, that the, uh, it didn't begin with the Indians themselves. Basically, what was happening, that citizens in Georgia were attempting to move west into a land, when, and basically what we call uh, southern Alabama and Mississippi today, land which had been given to the Indians by treaty in 1783. But the Georgians moved on. They thought, this is, we, we're just not going to leave the, the land in the hands of the Indians. We're going to take it for ourselves. And so conflict began between the Georgians and the Indians. And this resulted in the Indians wanting, of course, needing supplies. So in one case, we're into the year 17, uh, 1814. Now the Indians came down to, uh, to Pensacola and they told the governor, Governor Mazot here, basically we need powder, we need guns, we need ammunition. And the, uh, the governor said, I'm sorry, we, we haven't got any extra here, but we'll, we'll find it uh, with the help of the, uh, of the Forbes company that was in charge of the supplies. We'll find something for you. And they, they gave them a good many hundred pounds of powder and they took their, on their way back toward their, their homeland in North Alabama. They got about, about 75 to 80 miles from where we are today in Pensacola. They set camp, and at that point, as they did so, some of the volunteers from the, uh, from the uh, colonists, the, the Georgia colonists, learned they were there, and a battle ensued that became known in history as the Battle of Burnt Court, Burnt Burnt Corn Creek, and it was a, a battle and was uh, kind of indecisive, but again it stirred up the Indians still further, the creek still further, and a little bit later they, they ambushed a, a lot of the settlers who had, had fled into a fortress in North Alabama called Fort Mims, and a terrible slaughter took place there, and as a result of that Andrew Jackson came sweeping down out of Tennessee. Uh, fought a battle at Horseshoe Bend, and the Indians were, were badly beaten there. And of course, that led to the, chi the Treaty of, ja of uh, Jackson Treaty, which ultimately uh, began to force the Indians out to the west. Well, now within a matter of just a couple of a couple of months, the Americans, of course, have now become involved here with the uh, with the War of the of 1812. And the, while the, uh, the, we were not at war with the Spanish, of course, but the British were determined they were going to uh, attack the American colony, American country through the south. They were going to buy, come by, by, by land and by sea and attack through, the, uh, through what we now call Alabama. And they, they made the plans to do that. And uh, they set, set forth and, and began their, their activities there. The, 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 what ended up, of course, was Andrew Jackson coming down, confronting the British here, drive, encouraging the British to leave. A uh, few shots were filed between, fired between the Spanish militia and the Americans coming in. Nothing serious, but b shots were fired and conflict was here. Uh, that basically in, uh, ended the Americans' part of the of war in the 1812 here, but nonetheless, of course, the war continued later. We don't see much more about all of this until, about conflict rather, until just a few years later when the Americans now control uh, Florida by treaty. That we now have taken it over from Spain. And in 1826, we began both the, the what became the Navy Yard and also the forts, which defended the Navy Yard. And all of that began to taking, taking form here in 1826 to 1828. And we had a Navy Yard now. Uh, it didn't do much until 1846 when the United States went to war with Mexico. And at that point, we needed to send the American fleet to be on blockade duty along the east coast of Mexico. And all of those ships came to Pensacola to the new Navy Yard to be fitted, treated, and given supplies here. And that was our part in the, in the Mexican War here. The, uh, we don't see activity here again until, of course, the beginning of the war between the states. And at that point in time, the, both the Navy Yard, Fort Barrancas, Fort Pickens, all of these have become involved here. There, there are only shots fired a few times, but there are, uh, there's one battle fought on, uh, on Santa Rosa Island. There are two cannonades between the, the main forts here, but between Barrancas and Pickens. And no, no, no horrible casualties or anything like that, but there was bad, bad damage done to the, uh, to the Navy Yard and also to the uh, little villages where the people from the uh, Navy Yard w lived. Well, that, the war ended. We Pensacola phased out of the war in, 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 1900, in 1862, and nothing again was seen here until uh, 1898. 
And in 1898, by that time, there was a big question, do, did we need this Navy Yard anymore? After it had been set up to take care of ships made of wood. And of course, by that time, uh, steel vessels were being, uh, were, the, were the new order of the day. But the Navy Yard did survive. So it was here when the United States went to war with Spain in, in the year 18, in April of 18, 1898, doing battle in order to try to free the people, to aid the, the revolution that was going on in Cuba. Uh, the Navy Yard didn't play a big part in it, but the, what did happen at that time, of course, was the, uh, the, we, the two little companies that we had formed here as militia uh, were, were mustered, and they, they were sent off to camp. Unfortunately, they were very disappointed that they didn't get to go to Cuba, but it turned out they didn't. But the Navy Yard and, the, and Fort Pickens itself was uh, definitely improved at that point in time. When one goes out to visit there, you can see right along the water the additions that were built there in 1898 with larger cannon and all that went with it. Well, 18, we're moving into the 20th century, and our next co contact and conflict, of course, was World War I. And at this point in time, we, of course, by the, we, had, we had transferred our situation from being a Navy Yard to a Pensacola Aeronautical Station, which took place in 1914. And by the time we get into World War I, and this, is, of course, is in April of 1917, the whole community is embroiled in it. People are, are actively uh, participa participants, both as volunteers, as helpers. Many, many people here volunteered. More than 2,000 men from here were drafted in the course of the war. And over that time, we had not only the, the, the townspeople, but we, we started uh, something very new that went on here because we had never had one before, not a major one before, but in the uh, in 1917, 18, we built a huge Navy uh, shipbuilding or shipyard, rather, on the west side of town on, on Bayou Chico. And uh, that, that Navy yard was large, we employed over a thousand men, had an army guard of a hundred, and they began turning out vessels. They, that, that Navy, uh, Navy uh, shipbuilding yard survived through to 1924. Then it was reactivated in 19 in 1941-42 uh, when we got into World War II. Now, in the course of the World War I uh, problems, our Navy uh, people here trained hundreds <clears throat> hundreds of aviators, many of whom did go to uh, to uh, Europe and fought along along with the uh, air forces of. of, of French and British. So we were very definitely involved with that. And then, of course, world, we came to World War II. That began uh, for us here in, uh, in December of 1941. And once again, the Navy, the, the air station was a, a major part of our training, but much, much more so than it was in World War I. And it became the great training base. This is a, went forward to become the great training base that we now enjoy here in Pensacola as well. In the course of that, the, the World, War, uh, World War II, uh, the, Ameri the people of Pensacola were very active in production for war needs, for volunteer services, and of course, as I mentioned, the shipyard of 1917-18 was restored and built, and other industries that we had here also were a big part in making certain that the United States was well represented in that war. Then, we, of course, going beyond World War II, well, we have, we have to, our, our port in conflict, of course, was in, in the Korean conflict between 1950 and 53, Then we moved forward, to the, we certainly were very much a part of uh, the activities in the Vietnam War, and then, of course, all of the things that have, have troubled us since then, in the beginning with the, uh, the problems in Iraq and Iran and all of the various uh, elements that took place here, beginning with 9-11. Uh, so, as you can see, conflict has been with us all the way through our, all the, the life of Pensacola, beginning about the year 1719. I apologize, we had to move rather quickly through some of those, but I think it'll give you the idea that we have, we're unique, because I don't believe we could find any other community in the United States that can lay claim to having been part of each one of those major activities, conflict activities that have been part of the, war, of the history of the Western world. We'll be back next time with the beginnings of the story of Pensacola and World War I.